Hi guys, I'm Johnny Chivers. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm a data engineer with over 10 years experience working primarily Monday to Friday in the cybersecurity industry. Five times AWS certified and I like nothing more in my free time than making videos for this very YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at AWS LightSail. We're going to actually build a container or a EC2 instance, if you want to think about it that way, in the AWS cloud. We're then going to go a step further and install a discourse server um, because I think this is really easy to do and a really fun thing to follow along with. I've actually made this discourse server that we set up part of my website, www.johnnychivers.co.uk. So we can all go along after and then we can communicate there now as a form on my website as well as all these videos. I should add, this is not free. So this isn't available in the AWS free tier. This course itself is free and can cost up to $100 on their own cloud solution. So the actual code's free to us. But the AWS LightSail option that we need to choose is $5 a month. There is a free LightSail option that costs $3.50 for one month. However, it doesn't have the required resources we need to run this course. But if you just want to fire up a container in the cloud, then select that option and don't install this course. What is AWS LightSail? AWS LightSail is a service from AWS that basically takes the EC2 service, link in the description or up above me, and abstracts that further away from a user to make getting up to speed or using AWS even simpler than it currently is. There's limited options and limited ability to change those options, but what you do get is out of the box ready servers that you can use to host WordPress sites, discourse forums, or even just business backups. You go in, you select your region, you select what type of instance you want to fire up, what you want on that instance, such as Windows, Linux, or do you want a WordPress site? After that, a few clicks of the button and AWS looks after the networking, the spinning up of the instance, and even the ability to SSH in for us, although you do have the local options as usual. But why use LightSail? That's a great question. So it is essentially a more abstracted, limited EC2 service. So where does it fit in that AWS ecosystem? So AWS pointed out it's a great starting place if you're new to the cloud. Because it abstracts the complexities of the EC2 service away, it's a few clicks of a wizard and you actually end up with an instance spun up, all looked after for you and the networking sorted. I find it extremely useful if I need to just get something up and working in a POC, that's a proof of concept environment, or on this kind of side of things, I just want a server to attach onto my website to use as a form. Great for that sort of thing. It also concretes in pricing. So while EC2 can get very complex on its pricing model, what you pay is what you see on AWS LightSail when you click through the options. There's no increase or decrease on that model. It's a flat fee and what you pay monthly is what you get. But when use AWS LightSail. So, a couple of different options AWS point out to us. The first is when you want to POC something very quickly, proof of concept, few clicks the button and it's up. If you're new to the cloud environment and you just want an abstracted wizard that helps you get something up and running straight away, brilliant for that sort of thing. And then what I find it really useful for is when I want to spin up maybe an add on to my website, such as this discourse form, it abstracts all that infrastructure away from me and I can just get on with installing discourse. So what will we cover in today's tutorial? So the first thing we're going to look at, which is the kind of starting base of this tutorial, is AWS LightSail. I'll show you how to configure an instance, get one up and running, and then connect in. I'm then going to take this a step further and install a discourse form for my website. So discourse is an open-based software project, I'll put the link in the description below, that creates forms on a Linux server. So I'm going to spin up a Linux server, I'm going to show you how to install discourse. This is going to involve some extra services that you will have to pay for. Route 53 to get a DNS, which is like a www.url that's going to host your discourse form, and AWS simple email service. I'll show you how to configure both those things for Discourse. I'll then install Discourse on the server that we spun up on AWS LightSail. And finally, I've made it part of my website, so we now have a forum to kind of talk to each other on and discuss all things AWS and this YouTube channel. So join me in the console where we'll get started. Okay guys, that's me logged into the AWS console. First thing we want to do is go to LightSail. So type in light at the top and you will see it come up with LightSail. Once loaded, you can click create instances. You may also have a wizard if it's the first time you've logged in, but it works exactly the same. So click create instance. 
Um, I'm in North Virginia, Zone A, so if you wanted to change your region, you click there. This may be the screen that you land on first, just to reiterate, depending if it's the first time you've been in the light sale or not. You then click Virginia, which is where my website is, so that's where I want my um, instance to be spun up. I want Linux. I want OS only, and I want to go for the latest version of Ubuntu, which is 20.04 on the current date of making this video. You just pick the highest version there is. I want to change the key power and I want to create a new key power just so we have one. So I'm going to call this Johnny Shivers Discourse and generate that key power and download. So that's just the key power I'm going to use. Options. So for the Discourse server, if you're following on exactly, the minimum requirement is this $5 option. And that's because it has one gigabit of RAM. So minimum is the $5. I'm actually going to choose the $10 to give myself a bit more horsepower. Hopefully a few of you guys will log into my server and then we can actually have a conversation. So I'm going to go with the $10, but at a minimum, you must go for the $5. Identify your instance. So this is my Discourse server. So I'm going to call this Johnny Shivers discourse oh. and that means I can easily identify it leave everything else as default and create that instance so as you can see it takes a lot of the headache out of creating an instance compared to EC2 this will take about 30 or 40 seconds to spin up so I'm going to pause the video here let this spin up so we can keep everything in order and then we can pick it up once it's ready okay that took about 30 seconds in total. So the next thing I want to do is click on the actual name so I can go into the server. I want to go to networking and I want to make a new firewall rule. I want to add the rule and it's going to be the HTTPS protocol. And we just hit create. So that's now allowing SSH, HTTP and HTTPS into my server. Perfect. Next thing we're going to do is actually go to route 53 and configure it so it can reach this instance. I'm going to load up a new version of the console um, just so we can start from scratch here and we go to route 53. As I explained, you do need to have a DNS. I already have the DNS that I want to use because it's going to be my website. If you don't have a DNS and you want to follow along, if you click the little hamburger menu at the left hand side, if you go to register domains, if you go to register domain, and then you can pick a domain that you want. So I don't know, my website hyphen my name. And then you check its availability. And if you want it, you just click it, add the cart, continue, continue, uh, enter a few details, and then you own that domain and you can follow along from that point. Or alternatively, if you have your own domain elsewhere hosting, you can do it over on that site. So it's simple as that to add a domain. Back out, and then once you've got your domain added, or if you already have your domain, go into hosted zones, go to your actual zone um, that you want to use. So mine's is my website one, obviously. Click create record, give it a name. So I'm going to call this one discourse. So this is the URL that discourse is going to be hosted on. So mine's is going to be discourse.johnnychevers.co.uk. You want an A record. Then you want to go back over onto your discourse server and you want to take that public IP address. Um, I'm using the public one just so it's the same for everyone following along. You can use a private one as well, um, but that's a bit more complicated. I want to just create that record then. It's created that record, and you can see this course a record and my IP address. Perfect. The next thing we actually need to do before we go on and install Discourse on the server is set up an email notification service or server that Discourse can actually use. I'm going to use Simple Email Service by AWS because this is an AWS tutorial. If you're hosting your domain elsewhere, you might want to use something different. But for the purposes of keeping everything the same, I'm going to use Simple Email Service. So I just type in SES and I open that on a new tab. First thing you need to go to is actually the SMTP settings. Make a note of this or leave the page up because we're going to need it later. You want to click Create Your Credentials. Just use the default name and click create. You want to download the credentials and you can see that I this is the seventh pair that I've downloaded. And I'm just opening them off to the side. Keep that file open, it's just a CSV and it looks like this. 
So just keep that open to the side because we're going to copy and paste in a few things to our discourse server. Back on here, I'm just going to go back and onto that SMTP settings because I'm going to need them in a little second. The next thing I want to do is verify an email to be used. So if I go to email addresses here, if I go to email addresses here and I say verify new email address, type in the email address you want your discourse server to use to send messages around the form. So I have an info address at my website, which is what the contact form stuff's hooked up to. So I'm going to use it. Pick one of your own. Click verify this email address. It will send an email to my email. There it is. Just click on the big link verified back on here if you just refresh you should see it's now verified okay so i have my email set up i have my email server ready to go and i have my dns next step this is where light seal becomes so handy is back on to my discourse server i just want to go back to connect here actually go back to home it's even simpler click on the little console button here and you can see it actually connects into your instance without you needing the key power. So it's removing all that overhead of um, EC2 and the SSH just makes life easier. Now I'm just going to run a couple of commands to update. So as usual on GitHub, link in the description, I've put the commands we're going to need. So the first one, sudo app update. So back on and you can type along or copy and paste. So it's sudo apt update and hit enter. This is just updating some of the libraries on the server. Um, it takes a few seconds, so I'm going to pause the video and then we can pick it up once it's ready to go. Perfect. Then you want to run sudo app upgrade minus y. So that's sudo app upgrade minus y. Again, copy and paste in from GitHub if you want. To, if you want. Hit enter. This takes about four or five minutes with a couple of enters. So I'm just going to pause the video here and let it download everything it wants, and then we'll pick it up once it's ready to go. Okay, that's complete. Took about three minutes in total. I also had to enter midway through when I wanted to update an SSH file. I just kept the original, so it was the first option that I actually highlighted. I think it was third in list, and then I just hit enter. Now we've got it, we actually have to install Discourse. This is actually pretty easy, it's a couple of commands. So again, I've put them over here on um, on GitHub for us. So I'm just gonna copy and paste in the first one. So this is sudo git clone. So I'm cloning the repository from GitHub bar Discourse. Quite simple, really. So sudo course in, enter. Next command is the cd var Discourse. So it's just moving into that directory. So cd var, as you can see, I typed it in wrong. A second ago, var discourse should do the trick. Yep, I'm in the directory. Um, I just hit ls there, by the way, just so it lists what's in the directory. So you can see that there's a couple of files loading around. Then you just want to run sudo dot discourse setup. So you can see that there should be a file called discourse hyphen setup right there. And this is just going to launch it uh, with permissions. Now, you can see that I don't have Docker. Do I want Docker? The answer is yes, you need Docker. So hit enter. And it will actually go and install Docker for us. Now, Docker's a whole other video lessons on AWS. It's essentially a containerized service that lets us build images. You don't have to understand any of it for the principle of this. Um, this course is just using Docker to build itself, making it simple for us. As you'll see, we have to enter two or three different configuration settings, and that's it. I'm going to pause the video on that note until it's installed Docker, set itself up, and it wants those three or four configuration items that I'll guide us through, and then we'll be ready to go on this course. It's a very simple process, a lot of it being abstracted for us. It took about 30 seconds, and we're at that point now. It's looking for that information for the configuration. Now we're here, we want to enter the discourse name of our server. So back on the route 53, I always want to call this route 52, route 53, and copy in the name of the discourse server that you wanted to set up. So again, it's discourse dot for me. You pick your own. It's going to check that domain name, make sure it can reach it. Perfect. Email address for the admin account. Now this doesn't have to be the one that you set up on your web server or your email server. It's just the root account that you want to use to log in. So I'm going to use my own email address. So the email address is just this little server name that you have here. So I'm going to copy and paste that in. And paste. Cool. Uh, port is then 587. That's correct. Um, you can actually see that. Uh, over on your SES, so 587 is grant. 
Okay, next it wants some credentials. So it wants the username. The username is the STMP username. And you know what? I'll just pull it up on screen so we can have a quick look at it. Uh, I have to blur some of this out, but it's this one on the credentials file if you're using SES. So again, just go in and paste it in. And then the password at once is the password, which is this bit in the credentials file. Again, just copy and paste that in and hit enter. Notification email address is the one we set up on SES. So for me, it's just info, which again is my website, johnnychavaz.co.uk. And you hit enter, just hit enter and accept these next two things that are optional. Enter. You can see that configuration file was updated successfully. Update successful. Building this up the big screen and it's building the app. So this is going to take about five minutes, six minutes. So I'm going to pause the video here. It's literally just running through setting everything up. Um, you have to wait uh, while it configures everything. So may as well pause the video here and then we can pick it up once it is ready to go. Okay, that took about four minutes in total, four or five minutes. Just wait another 30 seconds after you get back on to the var forward slash discourse directory and the install has completed. And then once you've waited that 30 seconds, what you want to do is go and grab the DNS address that you have. Type in HTTPS, colon forward forward slash, paste it in, hit enter. And you can see that we are here for the setup. Okay, next step. I'm going to click register. You need to give a username and a password. Uh, username is going to be me, so I'm going to be Johnny Chivers, and I am the admin. <laughs> need a password, so I'm just going to create a password uh, off to the side. I actually use, uh, I'm not sponsored by the way. <laughs> Hello, Nord, if you are listening, I'd love to be sponsored. I use a lot of the Nord products, like the VPN and the password um, secure that they come up with. It's called Nord Pass. Uh, so I'm just going to create a password off to the side here. And paste and then register. You now need to go grab that activation email. So that will be on my Gmail. Okay, and then you want to confirm the email by clicking on activate email. Click here to activate. And then there's 13 steps we have to go through. And once you've gone through all 13 steps, just enter in information about like emails and you know who you want to be moderator to start with. That's you done. Click done. And that's a set up. So the last couple of things I'm personally going to do is I'm going to add this to my website and then we'll load it back up and I can show you where that is. And the other thing is I'm going to create a few different topics for us as well. And finally, as I said, I've added it to my website now so you guys can go in and click and you can either log in or sign up so i mean i've already got a login but if you need to sign up you click sign up and if you want to log in you click log in uh my username is johnny hyphen shivers hyphen admin and that's my password i'm gonna log in and that's the discord server up and ready uh and i'm working as you can clearly see I'm going to leave that here, guys. That's a very involved uh, session on actually setting up the Discord server. But as you can see, LightSail's removed all the overhead of that actually managing the server for us. So, yes, there's a bit of config with the Discord server, but we don't have to worry about the underlying actual infrastructure that it's running on, in this case, a Linux instance. As usual, I've been Johnny Chivers. I'll make all this information for free on my website, www.johnnychivers.co.uk. Make sure you sign up for the new discourse forum that I've put in uh, running on AWS LightSail. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching.